Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here to bring you a little video telling you what have we spent some of our most recent stimulus money on, uh, letting you know too what is our next focus and some of the future of the channel. So stay tuned. Really, this whole video could almost be like the previews before the movie. So definitely like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments down below what are you most excited to see so that we know possibly where to focus some of our efforts first. But don't worry. All of it is on our list and it is coming at you. So speaking of lists, I wanted to let everyone know that I have had a list for a very long time of all of kind of like larger ticket items that I want to purchase for our own personal family's preparedness. And I'm very excited to have checked off two large purchases off the list with our most recent stimulus money. So these were by no means... Um, frivolous purchases. They were very well thought out, very much planned in advance and hoped for purchases for our family. I'm very excited to bring that to you. If you're not here yet or you need other things first, then definitely do that. This is definitely not a saying what you should spend your money on. It's just what we did. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Number one being the All-American Sun Oven. Yay! Off-grid cooking superstar. So, um, the reason I decided to go with the All-American Sun Oven, even though it does have quite a hefty price tag, it is close to $400, um, even though I got a coupon, so I got $50 off. So I was, like, super happy about that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> You can find coupon codes, I guess is number one. But the reason I went with that is because primarily of some of the things that I have read about other <clears throat> methods for cooking with the sun, where people kind of jury rig their own thing. A lot of times it's not consistent and heat is not consistent and it doesn't maintain consistent high enough temperature to keep food safely heating for a long period of time. So like there were people showing like, some of the jury rig stuff when they put thermometers inside, it would get to like, maybe it would get to like 200, but then it'd go right back down to 140. And then it was like 180. And it was like basically bacterial incubators rather than food cookers. And so I decided to go with something that I have seen on multiple channels where I, you know, I don't know personally any of these people, but I tend to trust them. Um, like Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, um, Guildbrook Farm, Prepper Princess. There's several other people who have used the All American Sun Oven with great success and safety. And that thing will get really hot and it will stay hot for a very long time. Also, for us specifically here, we live in the Valley of the Sun and we're not called that for no reason. Last year, I think we had seven rainy days in the whole year. So this represents something that I will be able to pretty much almost entirely reliably rely on for our off-grid cooking needs if we ever lost power or, or whatever, especially like if we lost AC, you know, it would be a great way of cooking without having to have any added heat in the house. Um, and I'm definitely going to be testing that over the summer. Um, I believe kind of my holy grail combination is the sun oven and the wonder bag. I think I've said it in my previous videos. If you don't know what a wonder bag is, that is a um, insulated um, bag. It's like a portable, power-free, so slow cooker. And I can link that down below. So to be able to cook, like bring stuff to a boil in the sun oven and then finish it off in the Wonder Bag. Oh my gosh, you better believe there's going to be some test videos on that very thing. I'm going to be test cooking in that thing like all summer long. So definitely be wa watching for that. I am also planning, actually the very first thing I'm going to do with it, which is possibly one of the hardest things, <laughs> and you know almost most likely to fail is i'm going to see if i can bake sourdough bread in the sun oven because if i can manage to bake bread off grid i feel like boom i have it made okay because that is kind of like one of the last things like one of the last real holes in my preparedness is trying to figure out how am i going to bake bread. Now granted, I might not, I don't need to bake bread for sure, for, you know, but you know what, if you've got yourself used to having some home baked sourdough bread <laughs> in your life, you want to keep that in your life. So I am working on figuring out how we can keep it in our lives. Um, and so I want to be sure that I can do it even if we lost power and all of that. I'm also planning on testing 
some sourdough bread making by fire. So that's another thing that, you know, you can keep in mind. Of course, that might not be until next fall and winter, but I've been watching lately. I've been binging a bloke in the woods, I believe is the name of that channel. That guy is amazing. And he goes out and he does bushcrafting in England and he's got so many videos on cooking out in the wilderness. And so I've been binge watching those videos like crazy and honing, not honing, but like mentally honing techniques so that I can harness those hopefully to use in my own life. Cause I know nothing about cooking on campfires other than just like, to like put a skillet on top of a grate and like cook some stuff. Right. Like that's all I know, but he's doing like real work, like real cooking. So anyway, I'm not going to talk about that anymore, but Go ahead and go check that guy's channel out. Like, it's really kind of amazing. Now, he's great. He's not vegan. He cooks a lot of stuff that's not vegan, but like still, the information is just golden, okay? So, all right. Number two, the next big thing that we spent some stimulus money on was a grain mill. I got the one that I saw recommended by Rain Country, um, and now I'm completely blanking on the brand. I did not put that in my notes, but it's a big hand crank grain mill. And I will link it down below. Um, and so this is the same one that Rain Country uses. I believe it's the one that Guildbrook Farm got and uses. Um, and it's just like kind of a really well-known brand. A lot of people trust. And I wanted one, obviously, that was hand-powered so that I don't have to rely on power. Um, and so this actually is tying into our brand new focus, which I guess I'll mention early because I have mentioned it before. We are focusing now on one full year of food storage as well as many more very long-term foods. And so the grain mill builds into that because whole wheat berries can be stored for like 30 years. Whereas flour is typically, whole wheat flour is typically six months to a year at best as far as your food storage goes. So it is something where I can store the wheat berries and grind them into flour myself as needed. Now, I'm not saying that I'm suddenly going to start grinding all of the flour I use. I will probably still be buying flour, quite frankly, because I don't really have time, I don't think, to grind it every single time I need it. However, knowing that I have the option there is going to be great. Now, who knows? I might decide I really love the process or it's not as much work as I think it's going to be. And so I may fold that into my daily life and go, do away with flour altogether and just get the wheat berries. I, I don't know that. But I'm very excited about especially being able to expand my grain usage beyond even gluten grains like wheat, um, going into maybe even buckwheat, einkorn, sorghum. Uh, definitely like spelt, but that does have gluten in it. But I mean, that's not like I'm anti-gluten, but just like I'm really wanting to experiment with a lot more of these ancient grains. And so I'm excited about that, um, which all those also store for a really long, like, so it's like I can play and have food storage at the same time. Um, and then it allows for some more options too, and not having to buy so many things, even though I just like, I'm going to buy all these extra things. <laughs> for certain other things. Like I, for instance, um, I won't have to buy all the grits of cornmeal. So like I have polenta, which is the cornmeal I use the most. That's, um, I think it's, it's also called corn grits. Um, and then there's like regular grind cornmeal and then there's even finer cornmeal. I'm trying to remember what that one's called. And there's like masa harina, but that's different because that's mixed with lime, I believe. Um, but anyway, I digress. Basically, I can have all of that with just popcorn. So I buy my giant bag of popcorn, and even though we eat popcorn in our family, with a grain mill, I can turn that popcorn into cornmeal. Um, and so that's really exciting to me. Um, as uh, another, like, because it, it gives you more options with a lot of your food stores. And so, for instance, you can grind beans into flour. So um, that's kind of one of the criticisms, too, of long-term storage of dried beans is the fact that it takes so long to cook them. Well, I have done a firebox and wonder bag video test where I boiled beans on my firebox stove and then brought it inside and used the wonder bag to finish cooking. And so then that ended up not using very much fuel at all. 
Um, so I guess I can link to that video down below. It was a pretty cool test video. It worked, by the way. I'm really excited, actually. I'm like, should I even share that? I already said it. Who's going to watch this? I don't even know. I sent City Prepping an email saying, hey, we love your channel. You might like to check out this thing called a Wonder Bag. It's a portable slow cooker. And I kind of explained the whole thing. And he sent me an email back. And I was like, ah. And then, because <laughs> I really do love him. He's amazing. Um, and he sent me an email back and he said, this is amazing. I just bought one. So if you start seeing Wonder Bag videos on City Prepping, that was me. That was me. You're welcome. Okay. Not really. He is still the one who's going to do it and make the super high quality videos that I am not capable of making yet. I don't have the right software or filming equipment yet. These are more things that we're focusing on and wanting to do to grow the channel and make it better. I know talking head videos are not entertaining, but can I say it requires very special software to do a lot of the stuff that you see in other videos. Like when you see like a picture overlay, like in my ideal world, I could tell you I bought an all American sun oven and then like a picture of it would pop up in my video. But my editing software is not currently capable. I, the one that I'm currently using is not capable of putting a picture overlay. It's also not capable of doing like a voiceover. So like where you see in a video where something is being filmed and somebody's talking about something and then all of a sudden they switch to a different video showing what they're talking about, but their voice is still talking about it. My video editing software can't do that either. And so I am working really hard at figuring out ways of making better, higher quality videos with the limited technology that I have. But... I'm also looking into figuring out how we get better technology to make better videos. So I need a, basically I need some tech that's going to run, um, more complex video editing software like Adobe Premiere Pro or, or whatever, or I don't know, is that the right thing? Anyway, sorry. So that was, I'm digressing. I'm sorry about that. That's just, you know, he makes incredible videos. And so we were working on also increasing the quality of our videos. But I, I told him basically kind of in light of what happened in Texas too. I, I feel like our channel is so small and our, our audience is so small and currently our viewership is so small. I feel like the Wonder Bag truly is a game changer for prepping in general. Um, and I want as many people to hear about it as possible, even if they're not hearing about it from me. So I'm sharing the information to a channel who will be able to get it to many more people. So anyway, that is my passion because I want the information to get out there, even if it's not me. Like I'd love to go viral using that thing, but ah, oh, it's okay. City Prepping can do it and he'll do a really good, he'll do a better job than I can do right now. Okay. Bean flowers. <laughs> yeah, see, I have notes. So, okay, the grain, back to the grain mill. Bean flowers, because it's one of the criticisms is they take so much time to cook. Um, and so with a grain mill, you can grind the beans into a flour and then make things like flatbreads. Apparently you can even make like brownies with black beans. You can make um, like flatbreads using chickpea flour. Um, I know Kathy, if you're watching Kathy in the comments, um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's how, you know what? <laughs> As an aside, Kathy, when Adam and I talk and we mention you, that's what we say, Kathy, in the comments. So I hope that that's okay with you. Or if you want me to use your full name, I don't know if you want me to use your full name in the video. That's why I don't say it. But anyway, um, Kathy in the comments um, has a book recommendation for cooking with chickpea flour. And I guess if you're watching and you can post that down below, I'd love to have that recommendation again but then let other people see a lot of the things that you can make with chickpea flour. Apparently it's like a whole chickpea flour cookbook and I wanna get that, I need to add that to my list. Um, and now I can't remember what video it was that you commented originally, anyway. So yes, please let us know in the comments down below. Um, so yeah, and turning like quinoa into flour, oats into flour, you can do so many things and then um, being able to cook with maybe a little less water and a little less fuel you know, if, if stuff gets like put into more of a flatbread situation. So yes, I just think that the grain mill is like, it, it's going to be a little bit of a game changer, I think, for some of the storage, especially like I mentioned, being able to store wheat berries instead of flowers. So 
yes, we're figuring that out. And so that is the reason I put a grain mill on my list. Again, not because I'm like super passionate about grinding all my own flour, but who knows? Like I said, I might like it. I mean, I like spinning yarn. So yeah, a lot of people have been like, why? Why would you make yarn? You can just buy it. No, you can't. You cannot buy the yarn that I make, okay? It's some good stuff. Okay, I don't know what the heck is up with me and my spinning, but my yarn turns out like the most glorious, fluffy, soft clouds. Mm. So beautiful. Maybe I should give some away at some point. Okay, all right. And the very next focus. <laughs> so that was basically what it was. The All-American Sun Oven and the Grain Mill. Um, and so our next focus, and this is mainly Mr. Vegan Prepper's domain because he knows so much more about it. A lot of my stuff is like kind of the in-home stuff and he does a lot more of the kind of outdoorsy bug out bag, get home bag kind of stuff. He knows a lot more about that stuff than I do. So he is putting together his list or he has put together his list. He is currently refining the list finally for all of the bug out bags that we will have in the house. And we will be bringing you a video of the bug out bags because that is our next purchase. The next thing that we're going to be spending some of our stimulus money on is on filling out the bug out bags and getting them totally stocked. They're a little bit stocked. Like I, we've bought a couple things here and there. I've got like solar cell phone chargers, um, some water purification tablets, um, at uh Kathy again in the comments she mentioned uh that she bought a female urinary assistance device and it was funny like she, you mentioned that and so now I feel like I can't talk about it. like I'm talking about her in the third person but it's like I feel like she's watching so I feel like I have to talk about Kathy like she's sitting right there um but uh Kathy mentioned that she bought this or not maybe this one but a device and so I found this at Walmart and because I, I, I was starting to think about it I was like how have I never thought about that before like how vulnerable a woman would be out in you know some sort of situation you know even in a get home situation if you can't find a very private place to pee and you, you can't like pull your entire pants down to go pee and squat somewhere you know to be able to have something like this it's great and I'm still trying to decide whether or not I'm going to test it <laughs> I guess I should, right? Like I should learn how to do it, but I'm definitely, I'm not posting a video on that. Okay. But, um, I'm probably going to end up testing it at some point. I know it sounds crazy, but I, the, I don't want to be testing it. If I'm in some situation where I need it, I need to already know how to use it. Right. So anyway, yes. So I've never used one of these and I'm going to give it a shot. Um, and this is going to go in my bug out bag. So that is what I'm doing. And I have one of those now. And so thank you, Kathy, for mentioning that. So bug out bags, all kinds of stuff. Like he got a water keys. He got, he's got all kinds of stuff. He's going to be making the video on that because he's really good at that. And then yes, the next focus being one solid year of food storage. So you can see the transformation of my beautiful studio into our big food storage pantry is underway. We've got some totes coming. We've got plans for building some large built-in shelves uh, for storing a lot more of the food. Um, and so a lot more discussions coming up about weighing the, you know, between storage space and budget, like, because it, it's kind of really difficult to, to weigh between how much we should spend, but how much room do we have to store stuff? And it's just like, uh, it's, it's a lot. So we're going to be having a lot of videos as we're figuring out a lot of this stuff and hopefully it will bring, you know, some solutions to you guys as well. Um, so yeah, I'm moving solidly in the direction of a one year food storage pantry. Um, one year being an entire year's worth of food for our family, which we will then be cycling into like, like we'll be cycling through it. Although a lot of it is going to be based on very long term storage foods, such as wheat berries, which will store for 30 years um, and many other foods. But a lot of what I am implementing now is what I have been learning from reading this absolutely excellent book, which again, I will link down below. And I'm like, Kathy watching the video has to be making a list. I always watch these like three times before they get released. So I have to watch to find all the links I'm supposed to put. And then I have to watch to do the timestamps and I have to, yeah, it's just crazy. Anyway, yes. <laughs> so, um, food storage for self-sufficiency and survival by Angela Paskett. Thus far, I have not a hundred percent finished reading the book, but thus far this thing has been just like, 
over and over and over again, mind blown ideas left and right. This was like actually the thing with the wheat berries and all that was like, that's it. I am officially getting a grain mill. I just want that thing. And so, um, yeah, it's just a great, great resource. Um, go ahead and start here to get some ideas. If you, even if you have like almost no budget, I think this is, I think it was $18. Um, and it was $18 even on Amazon. Um, and I got it and I have zero regrets. So get that book. If you don't know where to start, get that book. And so, um, yes, it's an indispensable resource. I wish I had it when I was first starting. Like, I, I can't believe I haven't had this book yet. So all of the, a lot of this information is technically out there. Like a lot of it technically you could find for free. Um, but I don't feel like there is anything that can compare to having all of this amazing expert information expertly curated and arranged in a single source. And so, yes, absolutely wonderful. All compiled in one place. It's great. Now, again, you can technically find the information piecemeal out there, but like there's so many things in here that like, I didn't even know to, to look for it because I didn't, I didn't know. So anyway, get the book. Okay. And final thing, I can't believe this is taking so long. Actually I can because I know myself, but the absolute last thing, Mr. Vegan Prepper is keeping Sage occupied. That's why the door is closed. I don't know if you guys can hear them playing out there. Um, but moving forward, Adam and I, that's Mr. Vegan Prepper, in case you don't know, my husband, are very excited about bringing this to the prepping community at large. I feel like after all of this time, we have kind of found our voice. We found our why. And that is in our about page now on our YouTube channel but I will just share with you what is on that page. Our mission is to spread preparedness awareness to as wide an audience as possible, and in so doing, increase the security and stability of the world at large. Because it is very much our opinion and the opinion of many other people that the more preppers we can get into the world, the better the safer and more secure and stable the entire world will be. Um, we talked briefly, or not briefly, it was a really long video. <laughs> One of our videos that is like every prepper that is created is now like a little pocket of peace and stability and safety and assurance. This is not about fear, fear mongering, being terrified of things happening or, or whatever. I feel like it is exactly the opposite. The, the more solidly we are set, the more solidly we are prepared with every little thing that's added, I feel that much more secure. There are stories actually even in this, this book of people not only being prepared for themselves, but being able to help people um, in the other situations like here. Food storage. This is like a little, like a little sidebar she has. It's called food storage to the rescue. Um, disasters happen to everyday people. Scott and his wife got caught in a storm that resulted in their power being out for 20 days. Um, so just talked about what, what they did, what they went through. They used their barbecue grill to boil water and cook simple meals from their stored shelf, stable food. Um, they used water from their pool to wash themselves and flush their toilets. Um, Years later, when Hurricane Sandy left them without power for six days, they were ready to be self-sufficient because they had already done it before. Um, and in another example, Heather, she's got like real life examples in here. I'll, I'll read it to you and then that this will be it. And another example, Heather experienced a terrible winter storm in her area that left most residents without power. Her food storage and other preparations allowed her and her husband to care for their family of three and open their home to host three additional adults and two children for a few days until power was restored. They had stored fuel for propane heat, oil lamps, powerless cooking options, and plenty of food storage. Heather was even able to accommodate a neighbor child's gluten allergy. And that story was like, yes, that's it. That's what it's about. The more people we can create, who have plenty, the safer and more stable the world will be. Honestly, that's what it is. I mean, th those people possibly had their lives saved by Heather, 
whoever Heather is, you know, and being able to open up your home and share with people. Now, granted, obviously in a safe way, not like with just people that you don't even know, but like, you know, getting yourself set so that you can then help other people. Or even if you're not in a situation where you feel like you can do that safely, um, you at least are not part of the problem. Right. But even Prepper Princess, she was telling stories about how she ended up like helping basically save people's lives, giant power outage. Um, with her solar, she was able to run a refrigerator that she was able to keep neighbors' medications in, you know, people who need a refrigerator for their medications and, and things like that. So there's actually stories where preppers, a lot of times it's like this kind of like, oh gosh, it's like isolated, like lone wolf idea that is out there about like these crazy prepping guys who are just going to go into the woods and be all about themselves and surviving only for themselves. But I think that there are far more preppers who are others minded than I feel than are not, honestly. Um, I think we store and we're generous with what we store. Overall, I think that that is true. And so hopefully, if it isn't true, we'll make it true. <laughs> so thank you for watching and thank you for being part of making it true. And so, yeah, that's kind of just our mission is to increase security and stability in the world by giving information to people so that they can start their own journey and move towards more self-sufficiency and self-reliant living, which is not about selfishness. It's about making yourself secure and stable. And then, yeah, like I've said, I always try to say everything a million times. It's like I'm still trying to write papers for school or something. I just like to say the same thing over and over and over again. Seven pages. Yes. All right. But anyway, <laughs> so yes, that that's just our mission and that's our desire and that's our why behind what we're doing now. And yes, moving forward, creating a lot more actual real life content bringing it to you guys excited we're doing a filling mylar bag video very soon mr vegan prepper is doing the bug out bag video very soon he has an amazing video um that he is putting together all about situ situational awareness and cell phone usage and just just all kinds of greatness so also be looking for more stuff coming from him so that's great but anyway that's it so yes thank you so much for watching and for being part of our very tiny community for now hopefully growing more and more and more. Um, and yes, growing probably as the quality of our videos increases as we get better technology and better programs for actually creating the kinds of things that we want to create. So we are still working towards that. We're prioritizing our own personal family's preparedness over like a camera for YouTube. <laughs> so I feel like it kind of makes sense. But anyway, I guess that's all. So uh, thank you for being with us here at the absolute very beginning. We are really excited to see the growth that is happening and will be happening soon. So yes, all of you mean so much to us. Okay. All right. That's it. Officially, as always, <laughs> I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. I really mean that. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys later. Bye. Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here to bring you a little bit of an update, like a life update, but also to let you know some of the future of the channel, but also what have we spent our stimulus money on? What is some of the, what have we spent some of that on? Um, and then, you know, just to sort of kind of chat a little bit about all of that stuff, I do have some notes here, so I'm going to be somewhat organized and hopefully keep it I don't know. I always promise it's going to be short and then it's never short. I should stop promising that it's going to be short. I'm not going to promise that it's going to be short. I'm just not. I'm not. Okay. <laughs>